changing symbology of layers is quite powerful in QGIS. Here we can see a land cover layer that has been added to projects in the Pretoria area of South Africa. If you open the attribute table of this particular layer, you see what information is stored within. So this is a land cover layer. It has grass, trees, roads, and so forth as land cover classes. To symbolize this layer, you would have to categorize. You double click on the layer or you right click and set properties. Go to the symbology tab, single symbology and go to categorized. Then what you want to categorize on, for example, here, the land cover field that we just looked at and say classify. This pulls up all values that are categories within this land cover feature class. I don't have any other values, so I can say remove those, leaving me with these individual symbols here. Now, it's important to use colors and schemes that are intuitive, that make sense to the end user. For example, you'd want to use standard type of colors. So, for example, here, a pink color is not really very useful for grass. So you can double click this, it calls up the symbol selector. And you can then change this. If you go into the symbol fill, for example, I want the grass to be some kind of green color. So there's various options. I can use the color swatches, like the color wheel. I can then select the color like that. Or I can use the first or normally default option, the color ramp. For example, I'd like green here, or maybe up there. The, the current color will display the new color that you can use. You can also change it by sliding the red, green, blue, and so forth uh, layers there. So there's quite a lot of options available. That's an I just want to use a lighter green for the grass. That will be the fill color. Then the fill style is if I want to use a solid color or for example, hatching or points. So for example, if I want a solid color for the grass, I just leave it on solids. I can also decide, do I want an outline to it or not? To the actual individual polygon that is used to display this grass category, for example. If I don't want an outline, I just say no pen. If I do want an outline, I have the option of solid, dashed lines, and so forth. In this case, I don't want an outline, and I just say OK. If I now apply this, you'll see that the colors have changed. And my grassland there, where there are no outlines, black outlines, would be my grassland. Now, if I want to, for example, change the commercial color scheme, it's normally shown in red. So I can do the same. I go into simple fill and I simply just choose a red color. And again, I don't want to have any outlines. So I'm just going to change that solid line to no pen. And if you say OK and you say apply, you can see how this changes. Now, for example, if you want to use cross hatching or strokes, for example, wetlands, they're often shown using alternating blue and green colors or hatching. You can change this to blue to indicate water, for example, and then I can change the fill, not to solid, but I can change it to, for example, diagonal like that. And the outline color, again, I can remove or I can give it a dashed outline. And if I say apply, you'll see that the wetland areas have now changed to accommodate this cross hatching. Similarly, the dam, for example, should be blue. So I'm just going to do a simple color change to blue there. And I might want to have, for example, a field as a green type of color or perhaps a yellowish type of color. In this instance, I want a different type of fill. So I can, for example, have a dense dot pattern for field, anything that makes sense to me, and so forth. So you progressively go through the different classes or categories to change the color. You could also have just gone to the layer list and clicked directly, double clicked on one of the colors here, or the checkboxes, and then progressed with the same kind of process that was shown previously. Another way to change the color is that you might have a predefined symbol style already available to you. So you double click on the layer, 
you open it up to the symbology tab on the layer properties you go to style say load style and then you're going to load a style if you have one for example here of symbology style for land cover you just simply load it in as you can see here the colors change so if you then see you can see that the color scheme has now changed to accommodate a more standardized view of the categories that are contained within the land cover class if you now have done this symbolization of this particular land cover feature class you can also save the style for future use so you go to the styles tab and you say save style and then you just save it to your hard drive it's the same one that i just loaded now so if you don't have one available and you want to use it again later on this is how you would save a style and that you can then load for future projects for example but not all layers require symbolization into categories so here we have some points these are boreholes there are some roads and farm boundaries if you want to change the color there again you can just double click or you right click you say properties and that opens up the layer properties because i used the symbology tab on the previous layer it will open here by default if it doesn't for example it opens on information you just simply click on symbology now this is a borehole so again you have to think about what is intuitive for this for example i could use just a simply dot blue dot for this to symbolize it but i can also use different types of markers so this is a simple marker i can also for example have an ellipse marker that allows me to have greater flexibility in what i want to show for example i can also have a geometry generator where i can start coding i can also load images in so um, svg marker that i can load in from various apps or files so for example here there's all kinds of options that i have available to me windrose transport symbol support shopping that are pre-loaded you can also load your own if you have an svg symbol at your disposal but for this purpose i'm just going to use a simple marker and i'm going to just use the point or this uh, circle that's fine i'm going to make it blue just use, use the predefined colors here or use the color wheel so a simple blue marker and say okay i can change the size for example i can make it larger or smaller for example if i want it as three millimeters i'll just use the arrows there you can also just type straight in you can also rotate so for example if you want to offset your symbol a little bit you can do that there i'm currently using the circle but let's say i want to use the square for example and i give it a slight offset of about 30 degrees it's going to rotate it slightly as you can see there but going back to the circle and without any kind of rotation just as it is i can say okay and you can see the colors change on your screen so these are boreholes then the roads currently are drawing as brown it's not a terrible color for a road especially in this area it's quite rural however it is better to use um, a more intuitive color for the roads for example a topographical road here is two black lines that I encircled or encircled some white space, which is a standardized color in QGIS. Um, you can also use a simple black line. Um, if it's a major road, you can use um, blues or reds as well. National roads are often blue or red, but this is just a, a more rural type of road, so this is fine for that. And then we have the farm boundaries as well now they can be shown with a solid fill like you can see here but if you want to see the background information of the satellite image you'd want to leave um, space you don't want a solid color you actually want just to have an outline of the farm so for example here you can just pick some predefined ones here's one with a blue outline and then you can just change it to a black outline for example so that is an option if you want that and probably then just 
change the the weighting of the outline color itself for example if you just say apply now it's quite a strong thick outline so what you do then is you just go to the simple line and you change the width of the line so you make it just a hairline for example it's very thin as you can see it changes the outline immediately you can also use um, a, just a dashed kind of line here but for farm boundary this is actually quite okay so there's various ways of changing symbology it's quite powerful you can create your own symbol layer you can load a symbol layer you can change individual colors you can categorize the long colors but they're more than those options available that i've just shown so it's best to simply explore the options that are available to you.